All right, uh, welcome. We're going to be looking at synoptic charts or weather maps today. This is a geographic skill that presents itself uh, from sort of middle school to uh, senior geography. It's always a skill that that uh, I find students uh, have a lot of problems with. Um, so today, hopefully, I'm going to be able to show you just a few simple ways to read a weather map uh, or a synoptic chart. Um, the reason why I've done this one, uh, just over the weekend, we've had a fairly interesting synoptic chart with a few features that we'll go through. So what is a synoptic chart? A synoptic chart is just a weather map. Uh, and the thing that we ne the thing that sort of separates it from just a normal map is there are lines on the map. These lines are isobars, or they're called isobars, and they measure barometric air pressure. And so the lines match up areas of same air pressure. And there are two main air pressure features. There are high and low pressure systems, and we'll look at the difference between the two. So here is a weather map or a synoptic chart. Uh, the isobars are the feature that make it a, a weather map and you can see those lines sort of there and here's another line and basically the way these lines work or these isobars work is anywhere where this line is anywhere on that line or anywhere on that line is the same air pressure and air pressure is measured in hectopascals or HPA um, so, for example, this one here is 1012 running through Perth. So, everywhere in, that's on this line is at 1012. So, sort of just north of Brisbane is 1012, and just at Perth is 1012, and just at Adelaide is sort of 1012. So, anywhere that's on that line is the same uh, barometric air pressure. So, then the big thing that you need to then be able to look at is these isobars. And depending on the values of them, uh, you'll have two different pressure systems, either high or low. Look, the easiest way to remember this, I think, is if you do it this way. If, at the high, if the number in the middle is large, it's a high. And if the number in the middle is smallest, it's a low. So if they're going down, you've got a low pressure system. And if they're going up, you've got a high pressure system. Isobars, this is the other thing, isobars tend to work uh, sort of like contour lines in a way. If you've got contour lines on a topographic map that are really close together, then it means that the land's moving quite, there's quite a different sort of uh, a, a change in the topography of the land. And the isobars work the same way. If the isobars are really close together, like we can see here, well, then it's showing quite a, uh, quite a lot of unsettled weather. Um, and so there's a large change. We tend to get closer isobars uh, with low pressure systems, but not always. Let's have a look at the two pressure systems. Uh, so let's say this is a low. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the numbers are, but 998, 1002, uh, 1006, 1010. They'll always go up in the same increment, so I'm going up in four here. But basically, the thing that you need to know is the way that these uh, systems spin. A low-pressure system spins clockwise, or the air really around it moves in a clockwise direction. If you know that, then you can tell a little bit about the direction, uh, the the air, the, uh, the wind speed or the wind direction. Generally, with low-pressure systems, we get unsettled, cloudy, windy, potentially rain, storm. Um, but the thing that you really need to be able to work out is, what's the wind speed or wind direction? I'll do B. So if we go to point B and put our little compass here, whoops, in a low, the, the pressure system is spinning clockwise, the wind is coming up here, and so at point B it would be southeast, southeasterly breeze. I'm going to pause it, I'll get you to pause it for a moment and try and work out C, the wind at C and the wind at A. Okay, hopefully you've done that. So we'll do A and C. So let's do A first. The wind's coming down here. There's north, here's west. You know, I think if we were to say it was a nor nor'wester, um, you'd probably be, you know, fairly accurate there and if we have a look at C is south and west it's 
coming up this way, I think we could say that's a southwesterly. Maybe slightly more west. Let's have a look at a high pressure system now. So a high pressure system, H in the middle. Uh, we'll go 1028, 1024, and 1020. Like we said, with a low, in a low, they move clockwise in a high pressure system. Uh, we're going to get an anti-clockwise. So the air around it is going to move in this direction. So we can do the same again. We can look at where a place is or look at where a pressure system is on a location and work out the wind direction and sometimes we can work out the wind speed as well. Let's have a quick look at A. The wind's coming up here. It's pretty much coming from uh, the south. I'll get you to pause and you do B and C now. Okay, let's have a look at B. Here's north. The wind is moving around here. It's probably coming from a northerly direction. And at C, maybe let's, maybe you would say it was an east southeaster. These are always estimates, though. And so if you're somewhere near there, then that's fine. Let's have a quick look at, uh, at an actual weather map here. So... Here we've got a high pressure system, a low and a low. Uh, we've got a frontal system down uh, down here. Here's our high, here's some lows. Um, so basically what we can look at here is, uh, say, uh, a few different uh, systems. We've got a whole lot of towns or a whole lot of centres and we can measure... Uh, we can measure wind direction off that. The other thing that we see here are these little f hooks. Basically, what these hooks, they tell us the direction the wind is coming from and therefore its origin. So this one in Townsville, you can see, is pointed this direction. It is saying that the wind is coming from here, which makes it an east southeaster. To see the speed, you would just come down to this little key here and work it out. Uh, in knots. Alright, this is the reason I made the video. We've got a, we had a really interesting uh, synoptic chart come through over the weekend and so I thought, look, it's about sort of a timely, uh, timely one for us to try and have a look at um, the synoptic features. So probably the biggest feature here is uh, the low right here and the intense low, the tropical cyclone Ita in, uh, in North Queensland. We know that the low pressure system moves clockwise. Uh, clockwise here. So what we can do is we can try and work out the wind direction in Sydney. And I'll do it in red. So Sydney's about here. Melbourne's about here. And Brisbane's about here. Have a quick go at it yourself now, and um, I'll pause it and try and work out if you can sort of figure out what you think the wind direction uh, would be in those locations. Okay, look, what we're going to do, uh, and what I always do, I, I've got a website that I really like, uh, seabreeze.com, and I'll show you it in a moment. We're going to have a look at the directions um, of those of those locations but basically my prediction here is that in Sydney we would have a southerly uh, in Melbourne the winds gonna be coming up sort of in a more southeasterly fashion and in Brisbane I think we might see a bit more of a westerly flow let's have a look so here's Sydney Sydney Airport and you're right got a very strong southerly right when this is happening slightly more to the west as well that's also because it's in the morning uh, uh, due to the heating of the land. Interestingly, at this that low pressure system that we saw was a very intense east coast low, produced a lot of uh, a high swell uh, and a fairly intense swell. This here is actually, I just took this out the front of my house as well. I'll uh, play it for us. This was just as the low was hitting, you could see how windy it is. Typical low pressure. Uh, low pressure system really. You can see the clouds, the movement especially high in the trees as well. This is also, whoops, 
Here you can see the in the swell, that large rise in swell. Uh, if you have a look at that website, that's the Manly Hydraulics Lab, and that's showing us that because of that low pressure system, the average wave height in red and the maximum wave height has just jumped significantly up to about four or five meters. As a result, this is a photo I took down uh, down the coast, and you can see here. At the same time, this is all this swell here is due to the low pressure system, fairly large southerly swell. Let's have a look at those other locations. I said in uh, Brisbane, so Brisbane Airport, I was expecting a westerly flow, and we can see here, yeah, it's a, a westerly to slightly northwesterly flow. And in uh, Melbourne, I'd sort of predicted that we might see a southeasterly flow, which is exactly what we can see in all of these locations. Okay, so a bit of an overview. I guess the main things you need to be aware of is the, uh, that the isobars measure air pressure. They link areas of the same air pressure and it's measured in hectopascals. That you have two major uh, pressure systems, high pressure and low pressure systems, that the lows move clockwise and the highs move anti-clockwise. If you know this, you can pretty much read your way around most weather maps and most synoptic chart questions. I might put another video up to show sort of some of the more complicated features as well. Alright, thanks a lot. Have a great rest of the day.